I got to tell you, the, the one thing about counting down these old fancy playlists of mine, come across these songs I've forgotten about for years. Big audio dynamite on my fancy playlist, November 29th, 1986. Big audio dynamite. Come on, every beatbox. Big audio dynamite. My first, I thought my first memory of Big Audio Dynamite was in the fall of 1991. They put out their fifth album, and uh, they had this scintillating single called Rush. It was a fantastic top. It was a very commercial-sounding record. should have been top ten. Rush for the change in atmosphere. And then the Globe came after that in the winter of 91 and 92. And now I look at my fantasy playlist when I dig out my old fantasy playlist. I see they they I had a song of theirs on my fantasy playlist. Before that, back in 1986, come on, every beatbox. I listened to the video again, I listened to the song on uh, YouTube again, and, and, oh, and it's like, oh, yes, now I remember it. Come on, every beatbox. No doubt, Night Tracks played this one back in the fall of 1986. This was a year before we got MTV at the house, so all my videos I got from Night Tracks back in the mid to late 80s. Well, here we go. Big Audio Dynamite. Come on, every beatbox. Big Audio Dynamite was an outgrowth. It was sort of a, not a division. It was, well, it was basically The Clash. Mick Jones, form of The Clash. He was the uh, guitarist, singer uh, with The Clash, Mick Jones. When he was ousted from Clash in 1983, 1984, he formed a band. First band that he formed was called Top Risk Action Company. I love it. Top Risk sounds like a name of a corporation, but it's, it's like it's a punk rock band. And uh, the people they rec recruited was Lee Williams on bass, John Leonard on sax, and Nicky Heaton, Heaton, uh, former drummer of The Clash, but the group fell apart. Uh, Lee Williams, uh, one, of them, one of them quit the band, and one of them was kicked out of the band uh, for drug problems, but... Uh, Mick Jones did not give up. He just formed another band called Big Audio Dynamite, and they put out their debut album in 1985, 1986. It was the, their second album. It was called Number 10 Upping Street, and he was joined this time by his former bandmate, former, former Clash bandmate Joe Strummer was on this album, and it's a very Clash-sounding album. Number 10, Upping Street. As a matter of fact, Joe Stromer, he, he, he co-wrote some of the songs on this album. He co-produced this album with Mick Jones, and that yielded the record, Come On, Every Beatbox. That's the thing about Big Audio Dynamite. The, the, the Clash is associated with punk, but uh, Big Audio Dynamite was a little bit more diversified than The Clash, although The Clash did make some forays into a little bit of dance music when they did Rock the Casbah in 1983. But Big Audio Dynamite really expanded out Big time, uh, incorporating punk rock, dance music, hip hop, and funk. And this song's got every, got all bits, bits and pieces of these elements in that record that I'm gonna play for you. Come on, every beatbox. I mean, I just can't. That coming. I'm, I'm still, I, I, I'm still, I'm still in wonder about this. I completely forgot about this record. Well, let's go ahead and get with it right now. At number 41, it's a debut on my fancy playlist, November 29, 1986. This is Big Audio Dynamite with Come On, Every Beatbox. Or it might have been Every Boombox, but I believe it was Beatbox. It's got a great beat to it. 